Oh, and here we've got the district attorney. It is what I understand. Mm -hmm. and, and, and we're joined by Jack Stolzheimer. Jack, thank you. We're, we're live here on our, our stream. I appreciate you being here. Mm -hmm. uh, I know you briefed uh, uh, the media with what you could uh, describe, but I understand you were also running around trying to gather information, figure out what, what did unfold here. And uh, I know you've given us the details and not probably a lot has changed since then, right. but um, your, your sense of, uh, of this, and I understand it, I, I could see your frustration with what it is you're dealing with now. Sure, I mean, there's just too many guns in the hands of people who shouldn't have them, and here you've got uh, somebody who's a disgruntled employee of this business, doesn't like some of his coworkers for whatever reason, uh, and decides to come in and kill them. Uh, and so we've got two people dead. I had to go in and look at their poor bodies. These people just went to work today, like every other day, thinking that they're just carrying on with their life, and now they're laying on the ground dead. Uh, and there's three people at the hospital who I think hopefully everybody in the community is now praying for because they've got gunshot wounds, and one at least is critical. Um, but it's just it's a horrible, horrible thing to have to witness. Uh, thankfully, law enforcement got on the scene, uh, got the description of the shooter, got him in custody, so people in the community can know that there's nothing more to see here at this moment. Right. We're just processing the scene and trying to understand how this all played out. You see, uh, county detectives are collecting uh, spent firearms casings, uh, things like that, uh, and trying to put together this, this, the, the story of what happened here uh, so we can properly charge the individual who we've got in custody. If you can, can you say uh, or estimate how many rounds were fired? And I can't really tell you at this point. Uh, I think they're still, they're literally, as we speak, going around the the area of the um, business to try to see if we're missing any uh, spent firearms casings. So until they're able to give me a fulsome report, I really don't know. And you've indicated that uh, the shootings took place both inside and outside the business. Was this people unfortunately literally running for their lives? Is this what yeah. people leaving? Well, it's unclear. Uh, you know, there's one deceased person on the outside of the, the business and there's one inside. Uh, and so I think the individual just came to work, and as soon as he started seeing people he wanted to kill, he started shooting at them. Uh, and as I said, one is outside, uh, we're praying for their souls, but one is inside, uh, just normal people trying to go to work, to provide for their families, you know, live the American dream. And this morning, at, you know, before 10 o'clock a.m., they were they're, they're deceased. Their families, their families' lives are ruined. Jack, there was a distress call for uh, a countywide police assist. I understand there was a large crowd. Sure. Likely because of the gunfire. Is there any? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I, I think people, this is bizarre to be saying this, Joe, but because law enforcement has partnered with the community so well in Chester, we've reduced the number of shootings to the point when there is shots fired, it really stirs people. Uh, and there was a lot of shots fired, a lot of mayhem, uh, because people are running around who have been uh, wounded. Uh, and uh, it's not something people expect anywhere in America, but they're not expected here in the city of Chester as much either, which we're really thankful for. Um, but law enforcement got here, as did for our first responders. Uh, they took the individuals right to the hospital. Hopefully the, the immediacy of care uh, is going to help them survive. Um, but unfortunately, two individuals are, are, are not are not going to be able to, to, to join their families ever again. Jack, thank you. Thank you for stopping and chatting with me. I understand you're very busy. So thank you for making Thanks, time. Sir. Jack Stolzheimer, the Delaware County District Attorney, giving us the very latest and uh, some of what uh, we did not hear earlier with the rest of the press corps uh, is his emotion and his uh, uh, not a numb reaction, but a very deep reaction to now the details that he has to process, the details his investigators now have to sift through. They are literally working on trying to figure out the number of shots that were fired. No information on the firearm used, but if we want to recap, once again, five people shot, two dead, one now critical at Crozer Chester Medical Center, the two remaining being treated for gunshot wounds, police rushing some of the wounded, uh, some found outside of the business here, a linen business, rushing them to the hospital. The district attorney said hopefully the immediacy of care gives them the best outlook of survival. The business itself is a linen business. The suspect behind all of this coming to work armed and with a beef, according to the 
preliminary investigation. Uh, that is the sad story here on a Wednesday morning on 4th Street in Chester. Jim Donovan, we will send it back to you, sir. Thank you so much, Joe, for that update again. This has been breaking news coverage um, just before 9 o'clock this morning. Five people shot at a uh, linen company uh, in Delaware County, Chester, uh, the city of Chester. We'll be right back. All right, so that was uh, the breaking news coverage from our local uh, affiliate uh, ONO station in uh, Philadelphia. And, you know, this is heartbreaking. Um, as you heard, five people shot at a family-owned business, Delaware County Linen. They provide linens to restaurants, um, to hotels. Uh, this happened uh, kind of around 9 o'clock, I think, uh, they said. Um, two individuals killed, one found inside the building, one found outside of the building. The other three taken to the hospital uh, being treated. And the shooter, apparently, we heard very, very quickly there, ha was apprehended in Trainer, PA, which is about 13 minutes or so from where the shooting initially happened and this, this individual being described as an employee. Yeah, and to give you guys an idea of exactly where this is happening, we were showing a map. This is in Chester. It looks like it's right on the Delaware River between Wilmington, Delaware, and Philadelphia. As you mentioned, this is Delaware County. The DA is the one we were just hearing from. And a disgruntled employee, um, as you mentioned, still obviously don't know a motive, but that person has been apprehended. Still working to get answers on how many rounds were fired, what kind of firearm was used. Of course, a motive, if there can ever be um, any sense made from something uh, this absolutely senseless, but described as a disgruntled former employee. And the DA just saying two people are dead just by showing up yeah. to work. And you heard, you did hear the emotion in the DA's voice. And, you know, to let people sort of know, Chester has had kind of a, a, a challenging history, right? It's dealt with a lot of crime uh, over the decades, but in recent years has seen a vast improvement. Uh, violent crime rates tumbling downwards. So it makes this even more sort of um, uh, just more of a disappointment, an understatement to have a violent crime like this happen here in a, in a city and in an area that has been turning their violent crime statistics around. And that could be yeah. why the, the all assist was out. Obviously, it's a it's a very violent, horrific act. But in addition, you have people who aren't used to you know, he, they, they hear something like this. It's very troubling. Yeah. Um, and so maybe some of that was also just to make sure that everybody was staying safe. But the DA is saying the threat is over right now. They're just basically processing the scene, picking up those rounds like we had mentioned. Yep.